Welcome back on this SRE Demystified series. In this short video, we are going to look at what is an engagement model in an SRE context. So, what does an SRE do? A quick recap. They do a lot of things including deploying, building, writing code, producting, uh, coming up with product ideas, testing and a lot of things. And now, as we have seen in our past videos how important an SRE is for an organization whether it is small, medium or large scale. In this video, we let's look at how do they engage each other. <coughs> so according to Google who has written phenomenal textbooks on SRE, demist SRE principles, the first and foremost principle is uh, PRR, Product Readiness Review. PRR or Product Readiness Review can be started at any point of the service life cycle. So SRE seeks product and production responsibility for important services for which it can make concrete contributions to reliability. So they are concerned with several aspects of a service which are collectively referred to as production. Thus they can be involved in any stage here uh, either in design, build and implement or launch or even at operate. Now how SRE can help work in product readiness review. They might be able to identify the system architecture and inter-service dependencies. They can help identify instrumentation metrics and monitoring for the system. They can help work on emergency response, capacity planning, change management and also can get back to you on the performance in terms of availability, latency and efficiency. What are the objectives of PRR? The two main objectives of PRR is to verify that a service meets accepted standards of production setup and operational readiness and that service owners are ex prepared to work with SRE and take advantage of SRE expertise on the same. Then another objective is to improve the reliability of a service in production and minimize the number of severity of incidents that might be expected. So PRR essentially targets on all aspects of production that SRE care about, whether be it latency, be it error budget, be it change management, be it incident management, anything. What are the typical steps involved in PRR? There are five steps involved in PRR which starts with analysis. The developers will engage the SRE team where a, some of the SRE team members probably called as a sub team will help in analyzing the current product on the service or production shortcomings. They will gauge the maturity of the service along with various axes of concern to SRE and they come up with a PRR checklist. The second step is based on the checklist prepared and evaluated against that checklist. The improvements and refactoring will be done uh, based on the maturity analysis. So the improvements are prioritized, priorities are discussed, negotiated and a plan is in place. The refactoring is done and a matured and ready product is ready by end of this stage. And then the SRE team plans training for their team members which could be in terms of design review overviews, deep dives on various request flows, a description of the production setup, hands-on exercises on various aspects of the system operations, everything. Now by end of the training the SREs are trained and they are ready they will be onboarded to support this particular product for reliability. So the responsibilities will be transferred in stages and development team is available as a backup in the beginning and an ongoing engagement will be model will be in place. And finally continuous improvement 
where SREs are taking care of the product, they are looking at actionable alerts, uh, they respond to new conditions, new demands, they maintain reliability standards for that service, etc. And finally, the label service is going on. There is also evolving uh, early engagement model. The service implements significantly new functionality. and will be part of an existing team already ma managed by SRE. The service is a significant rewrite or alternate to an existing system targeting the same use case. So how SRE can help in different part of this life cycle? They can give lot of insights and inputs on architecture and design phase in terms of reliability, maybe less on active development, again an increased uh, reliability or feedback on early access and general availability and finally on deprecation. These are the two important textbooks that I have referred while preparing these materials. I strongly recommend you to read this. Thank you.